back, party people, to another edition of How to Pass the Math FSA Third Grade Style. Today we will be working on maths.3.md.1.1, which is time. Not times tables like multiplication, but time like tick, 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 tick. Um, heads up to everybody that this is a rather difficult skill for a lot of kids. It's not, it's telling time to the nearest minute, but it's also determining the start time or the elapsed time, which, <coughs> excuse me, is pretty challenging for kids. So let me go ahead and teach you. Let me teach you now. Example one, Julia. Shout out to my little niece, Julia. Julia arrives at the movie theater at 5.30 p.m. She leaves the movie theater. Sorry, arrives at the movie theater at 5.30 p.m. She leaves the movie theater 75 minutes later. Place an arrow on the number line to show the time she left the movie theater. So, here's where she started. 530. This is a grid item which means that you'll have to use this graphic feature to show your answer. So it's a number line with time and I know that she was there for 75 minutes. So 75 minutes, the way I would break it down would be 60 minutes which is an hour plus 15. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go for 60 minutes, which is an hour. So an hour after 5.30 would be 6.30. And then 15 minutes later, 6.30 plus 15 would be 6.45. So I'm going to put my arrow right there. I don't know why they're having you put an arrow there, but that's what they showed in the test item spec. So Okay, example two. Mikkel, Mikkel is a student in, that I teach at my school. Mikkel arrives at her friend's house at 3.32. She leaves at 4.23 p.m. How many minutes was she at her friend's house? Okay, how many minutes? So what is the length of time that she was there? Um, for time, I love, love, love using number lines. So I have my start time, and then eventually I'm gonna have my end time. Okay, start time was 3.32 p.m. And I need to get to 4.23. So I know I can't go a whole hour because that would give me 4.32 and there's actually a way that you could do that but I wanna make this not so confusing for you guys. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get to a multiple of 10 for the minutes. So 3.32 plus eight would get me to 340 and now I can work a little bit more with that. So now I want to get to the next hour. I want to get to 4 o'clock so 340 plus 20 minutes would get me to 4 o'clock. Okay and now I just have to get to 423 so 4 o'clock plus 23 equals 423 but I'm not finished I have to add up all these minutes in between to determine that elapsed time. So 8 plus 20 plus 23 minutes. 8 plus 3 is 11. Ooh, it's high up here. Nice landing, dude. 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5. So 51 minutes. Notice that none of my answer went inside of this box. I'm sorry. None of my work went inside of this box, only my answer went inside of this box. That's how you solve it. Example three, Bert watches how to pass the math FSA videos on YouTube at the time shown. Bert, you're awesome, dude. Tell your friend Ernie you know what's going on and that you're awesome. At what time does Bert start watching the videos? So here's the clock. It says the time shown. I just got to see what the time is for this. So this is an easier type of question. Um, remember that my hour hand is my short hand and my minute hand is my long hand. And the way that I teach kids to remember this 
is that hour is shorter than the word minute. So the hour hand is shorter than the minute hand. Okay, so first I locate my hour. My hour, it looks like doo -doo 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 -doo, that it is almost at the eight, but it is not quite at the eight. So it looks like we are still in the seven o'clock hour. Then I take a look at my minute hand, which is a little bit longer, and it's going right there. So I start at the top, at the 12, and for the minutes, each time I get to one of the whole numbers, I count by fives. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, er, now count by ones, 41, 42, 43, 7, 43, 43, 43, which means B is your answer. Four, Ernie. <laughs> Ernie, I must be in a Sesame Street kind of mood today. I forgot about that. Ernie finishes cleaning his room at 9.18 on a Saturday morning. It took him a total, so he finishes then. It took him a total of 80 minutes to clean his room. At what time? Did he begin cleaning his room? So I know this time I'm going to use a number line. And I know the end time, which is 918. So I have to go backwards. That's okay. Just pay attention. Okay. I need to go backwards a total of 80 minutes because it took him 80 minutes to do it. So... I know that I could say first that we go 60 minutes and then 20 minutes back because 60 minutes would be an hour. So if I go 60 minutes back whoop, and subtract minus 60 minutes, then I would get, you're hearing my dog Bella click her nails on the floor, um, I would get to 818. Now it'd be kind of hard for me to go 20 minutes back, so let me first go my 18 minutes back. Why did I do that? Because taking away 18 minutes would mean that we're at 8 o'clock now. And then I just need two more minutes to subtract. So if I took away two more minutes, 8 o'clock would mean that we're at the 60, so going back would be 59, 58. So 7, 58 would have been his start time. Equation editor, so only my answer goes in the box, not all this work I've done. 7.58 a.m. Good job, Ernie, cleaning your room, being responsible. You guys should clean your room, too. Okay, I don't know why, but this is my favorite type of time problem that I've noticed on the, uh, the FSA item specs. So let me go ahead and teach you how to do this one. Abby, like Abby Kadabi from Sesame Street. I was on a Sesame Street kick when I was making this. That's funny. Abby has homework every day. The length of time in minutes of each homework assignment is shown down here. Abby starts her homework at 4 o'clock p.m. Complete the table to show what time she will start and finish each assignment. So this is a table item. I'm filling out this table. Um, okay, so the first assignment that she completed was math. It took her, the time that it took her to complete the assignment was 15 minutes. So if she started at 4 o'clock, 4 o'clock plus 15 minutes would be 4.15. That's easy. Which means now she's moving on to the next one and starting her reading at 4.15 but it takes her 32 minutes. So I'm gonna use my number line. Start time was 4.15 and I need to go 32 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and go 30 minutes first. Oops, not 30, 32, I think it's gonna rain. Um, that would get me to 4.45 because I'm really good with my quarter hours. And then it's 32 minutes, so plus two minutes would be 447. That means she's starting her next assignment at 447. Create another line. 
447. And it takes her 17 minutes this time. So first I'm going to do adding 10 minutes out of 17 and that will get me to 457. Then I'm going to add 3 minutes to get to 5 o'clock to make it easy for myself. So 10 plus 3 is 13. I need 4 more minutes to get to 17. So plus 4 would be 504. Nice job, Abby Kadabi, on your homework and getting it done in about an hour. It is now time for your words of inspiration. This one comes from Mandy Hale. Mandy says, oh, this is one that I have just recently put into practice with my life, because you'll see. It says, you don't always need a plan. Sometimes you need to breathe, trust, let go, and see what happens. I am the type of person that tends to overthink things, and lately I've been trying to not create a plan for every little thing to just let go and just see what happens. We'll see what happens with this how to pass the math FSA. If I can just help one person, then that makes it all worth it. But maybe I can help a lot of kids, a lot of teachers, a lot of parents out there. So I'm just going to breathe, trust, let go, and see what happens. You try it too.